1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and we'll begin this morning's session and we'll continue with this study on the spirit, soul, and the body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23, now I want you to tune your spirits into the word of God. I believe that if you, you, you're going to have to focus this morning, you're going to have to just bless God, stay right on the very edge of your seat until you get it. <laughs> Amen. Don't stop until you get it. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't go to sleep. You know, the Bible says rest in the Lord, but I mean, this is ridiculous, you know. <laughs> Let's read verse 23 and 24 together. Ready? Read. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Now we've been talking about the development of a whole man and for the last couple of weeks we have been dealing with the training and the development of the spirit man. Now we have determined that man is a tripart being, three in one, tri meaning three. He is a tripart being, he is a spirit. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and according to John 4 24 man God is a spirit now if he made man in his likeness then man is a spirit but man is a tripart being and for our study purposes man is a spirit he possesses a soul and that's the area where the will and the emotions and the intellect are and he lives in a body man is a spirit he possesses a soul and he lives in a body. This body is not the real you. The real you lives in this body. This body is the house or it is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now at the point of death, when a man dies, it is his spirit and his soul that separates from his body. That's why when we see in the book of Genesis, God took a slab of flesh and the Bible says he breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Until he breathed into that slab of flesh, that, that flesh wasn't alive. It is the spirit part of man that has been designed to be the leader of this human system. The body cannot be the leader of the human system. It, it just only does what it's told. The mind cannot be the leader of the human system because if it doesn't work out like the mind understood for it to work out, then it'll snap or crack up. The spirit of man has been designed to be the leader of this human system. So we want to understand that there, there are three parts to man. We've got to work on all three areas in order to be complete and understand what it is God's calling us to do. Now go to Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Now let's read verse 16 together. Ready? Read. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now let's just deal with that just for a moment here. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. I get the picture of a man that, that, that is not doing it just every now and then, but he's doing it always. He's doing it as a life. He's walking or existing or abiding in the spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I heard about spiritual things, I could never get a hold of it. And so when people would mention walk in the spirit, you know, it was like this unsure way of doing that so you would just kind of get ugly and start acting weird like I 
I mean, you could never grab it, so you, you start doing something stupid. You, you, you jump dumb deep real quick. What are you doing? I'm walking in the spirit. No, you're not walking in the spirit. You look crazy. That's not what walking in the spirit is all about. Walking in the spirit is walking in the word. Jesus said, my words are spirit and my words are like life. When a man walks in the spirit, he walks in the word. Now, this is what he says. He says, now, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust. You will not fulfill the lust or the, 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 the intense appetites or the dictates of the flesh. Now, one way is spiritual. The other way is natural. We've been talking about a man that operates in spirit law or by spirit law operates above natural law. Spirit law is the same thing as supernatural law. And the reason why it's supernatural because that word super means above. It is above the natural law. And what we've seen, we understand Jesus walking on the water. He is now governing natural law. That says a man's not supposed to walk on the water, he's supposed to sink. Gravity, the law of gravity, says a man's supposed to sink. Yet, Jesus operated by spiritual law and he walked on the water. Well, what happened? He, he is then no longer subject to natural law. He is then no longer uh, under the authority and under the dictates of natural law. In other words, if cancer comes in on the scene, a man that chooses to walk by natural law, then that man would probably end up dead. Because natural law says a man that gets cancer eventually is going to die. But a man that operates by spiritual law, operates above natural law that says when you get cancer, you're supposed to die. The thing that I'm trying to get across to you this morning is that all that you have ever learned you've learned it based on natural laws you went to school and you learned how to operate by the natural laws of this world you learn how to operate by the natural laws of this system natural law that says if you want to make a lot of money go to the school and get a degree you've, you've learned how to do that but now understand natural law that says that your salary is based on you getting $3.35 an hour. If you operate and submit yourself to that natural law, that's all you're going to get, $3.35 an hour. But a man that operates by spirit law says this, in the natural, you give me $3.35. However, in the spirit, God is increasing my income. Do you see that? Now, I sure would much rather be operating in spirit law and governing natural law than to be operating in natural law and being governed by natural law. You understand that? And the whole deal is, is that people are dying, they're poor, they're broke, they're in bondage because they don't understand that God has designed the system for them to operate in a higher level of existence. God has designed a system for you and I to operate above natural law. And any man that operates in the supernatural laws of God, the Bible says against those laws, there is no law. Well, what does that mean? That means a man beginning to operate by spirit law, there is no law in the natural that can stop the spirit law. Now, I understand the significance of that. The devil, <laughs> Satan, operates 
in the realm of the natural. He convinces you of certain things based on your five physical senses. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he's condemned to operate in the natural only. As far as you are concerned. He, will only, he can only tempt you with what is common to man. Now understand something. Yes, there are, there, he is a spirit, which means he can operate demonically in spiritual areas, but he can't tempt you. Only, only way he can tempt you, the only way he can deal with you is through natural law. Anything else God won't allow. That's why you don't have to ever worry about the devil doing something to you that you can't handle or control. He, has, he is in custody. He cannot operate against you except by natural law. Now here and there now, he can't do nothing to you except by natural law. You, you hear what I'm saying? You, you understand what? He can't come and, you know, while you're walking down the street and you don't see him, he can't come and get you in a headlock and you can't see him. If he's going to get you in a headlock, he got to transform in a place so you can see him sort of be a fair fight. God set the rules. Satan came to God concerning Job and God set the rules. He said, you can do this, but don't you take his life. What is that telling you? God is still in control. So he set up the rules and he says, you can only deal with my children based on natural law. Now let me show you why he set the rule. Then he came back to you. And he said, son, you can operate by natural law. But I want to give you a choice. You can operate higher than natural law. Which means if you come on up and operate my way, you are no longer subjected to and under the authority of natural law. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up higher. Come on up, sit hither. Come on up and sit where I sit. Oh, glory to God. Operate like I operate. Behold, I give unto you power. Woo, man, excuse me. Now, what I'm trying to show you is this. Your lack of money, your lack of health, your lack of peace, or whatever it is you're going through. If you'll make a decision today to start operating above natural laws that dictate these things to you, then you're no longer under the authority of natural law. You're no longer being governed by natural law. You are now governing natural law. I sure would much rather be the governor than the one that has to suffer based on the natural law. You understand what I'm saying? I now, here when he says, walk by the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He's saying one is spiritual, one is governed by spiritual law, and the other one's governed by natural law. He says, now, if you walk by natural law, you're in bondage. But if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, now, back on up to verse 1 here. Same, same, same chapter. Galatians chapter 5. Everybody understand what we're saying? You understand where we're going here? Verse 1. Stand fast therefore in the liberty. Underline that word, liberty. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. He's made us free in that liberty. He said, now, since that liberty made you free, stand there. And stand there good. Because he says, as long as you stand in that liberty, he says, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, notice what he said. He says, don't be entangled again, which means you can be entangled again if you don't stand in the liberty that made you free or that untangled you. But we've got to understand what that liberty is. Where that liberty is and how it operates. Now notice, this liberty made me free. 